Hey everybody, this is Christine Bertram and I am coming to you live from the hive here in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. And it is another night for stamping fun <laughs> with you guys. Tonight we're gonna be doing the July monthly card making class. And before we do that though, I've got some cards to share with you. <laughs> My mom brought all the cards that she got from all of you guys that sent them to her for her birthday which was a few, oh my gosh, it was already three weeks ago. I don't know where that time flies, but it, it was June 29th and it is already what, July 15th. Yeah, so three weeks already. So I'm gonna make sure I can find you guys. I gotta make sure that I have the internet set up correctly to watch the live because otherwise I will have issues like you guys sometimes do with when you have internet issues. So let's see, it's connecting. Um. Let's see what happens here. Oh, there, I'm live, perfect. So we gotta see who's all with me tonight. We have our Fond du Lac County Fair going on tonight, so we might hear some stuff. <laughs> I don't know if we'll hear music or not, but um, there are different bands that are playing and there are a lot of people parked outside. <laughs> I live a block from the fairgrounds. Hi, Brenda, hi, Donna, hi, Sharon. Mary Carls and Gwen are here. Wow, Barb Johnson and Sharon oh, and Sandy. Jennifer, Linda, oh my gosh, you guys are also so punctual. Very, very nice. <laughs> I'm still trying to get my personal, this guy set up so that I can be watching with you guys. So, oh yeah. Hi, Sue Beasley from Australia. I love it. Okay, so where are we here? So we got the Fond du Lac Fair going on. Hi, Randy. Um, and so that will be exciting. I don't plan to go over there right now. Hi, Jean Benson. Yes, I could really go for a blue moon right now. <laughs> so I have a lot of awesome ladies that helped me get ready for the used stamp sale that is tomorrow. Uh, there, I'm missing it. Let's see here. I'm distracted. Can you guys tell? Let me find this video so that I can move on <laughs> with giving you guys all my attention. Um, oh, here, where is it? My goodness. So I have a lot of awesome helpers. So three times a year, I do a used stamp sale. And I do my used stamp sale like a rummage sale. Um, there are about 20 different crafters and maybe 25. Hi, Chris, there she is. She was just here. Hi, Deb. Hi, Kathy Back. Hi, RJ. So we just set up for the used stamp sale. I do not run it like a buy one, get one. It's not all my personal stuff. I, very, I don't have a lot, actually, <laughs> of stuff that I generally sell. Let's see. Here it is. Oh, my gosh. Right, here we go. So, um, but everybody that is either, you know, my team members or on, hi Roxanne, hi Anna Rebidoux, hi Victoria, people on my team and customers, they bring stuff to sell and it is from seven until five tomorrow. So I got the day off and, um, we're going to sell some stuff hopefully. So people that came today that helped out could shop a little early. So they've, we've already got some sales, which are good. So Let's see here, you guys. My Wi-Fi is being a pill right now. <laughs> so I got to put in my internet password, which is, you guys, be happy, of course. Let's see if this is going to fix my issue. Oh, my goodness. So my screen was delaying, like, what, you guys have issues? <laughs> hi, Carmen. Hi, Jeannie. Hi, Terry. Oh, and there's Jeannie Parker. Hi, Kay. Patricia Settles with us, too, you guys. So I don't want to wing this, <laughs> but what we have tonight... Well, I'm pulling this up. I have cards to show you. My mom got all of her birthday cards here. I think I have most of them. I might be missing one or two. So if I don't show off a card that you gave her, it wasn't intentional. Um, she gave me a bag full of cards and <laughs> that's what I'm going to go through. And I also have some beautiful cards that I got in the mail from people. Hey, Elaine Reback. Hi, Carol Lee Crab. And so, uh, yeah, so we're going to do that. I'm going to restart my phone. Maybe that'll help the situation. We have mystery card night is ready for Monday night, guys. We have Clue One. It's available in the Cards by Christine website or it's on my Facebook page. And I'm also gonna do a drop down on my screen here so you guys can see Clue One. You can always take a screenshot if you want. So mystery night is Monday night. So maybe you'll join me for mystery night on Monday. <laughs> so um, what is today? Today's Thursday. So I have in-person class on Saturday morning. We've got the sale tomorrow and then we've got mystery night on Monday. Hi, Barbara from Connecticut. So hi, Deanne from West Michigan. 
So if you guys, if you have a second and you can share the video with your friends and family, that would be awesome sauce. We love it when you guys share me. Hi, Debbie Schultz. <clears throat> Debbie, I will be meeting you tomorrow, I hope, <laughs> because you're planning to come up for the stamp sale, right? I'm pretty sure you said that. So, um, all right. So I restarted my phone, guys. And we're gonna see if that makes all the difference in the world because then I don't have to keep looking and the party can get started. So thank you again to all my helpers. We started around 3.30. Um, hi, Jennifer Jones. We st hi, Hillary. We started around 3.30 setting up and you guys within an hour, everything was pretty much set up. And, uh, and then the gals that helped set up could do a little bit of shopping. So that was awesome. And let's see now, you guys, technology, is working. I'm pretty sure it is. And here it is. Let's try this again and make sure that I got, okay, we have 50 people watching. Woohoo. Okay. So I am very hopeful that the internet just automatically connected and we can move. Yes. It says it's connecting. Okay. So what we're going to do is flip the camera down and you guys can take a second to look at what the clue one is for mystery night. So let's flip this down and you guys can see, um, what we've got here for mystery night. If you guys didn't see this yet, this is what we have going on for on Monday night. This is clue one. And just so you guys know, a little insider information, Kelly and I made a Christmas card. Hi, Cheryl Thomas. Hi, Lynn Beasley. So we made a Christmas card and um, that's what we're gonna be going with. <laughs> so it's Christmas in July. We're going with the theme. <laughs> Thanks for sharing with your friends, Faye. I appreciate it. Okay. So that is clue one. And then, hi, Patty Stebbins. Okay, so let's show you some of my mom's beautiful birthday cards. So you guys know the drill. If you see a card that you like, you can like, depending on your phone, you can do a screenshot. Samsung phones go like that. Apple phones, I'm not quite sure. But you guys, this one is a blast from the past. It was so amazing to look through some of these cards because I found a lot of them that were class cards. Hi, Margaret. A lot of them were class cards. So this was from the Painted Poppies class that I did last year. And this is from my brother and his wife, my sister in law Linnea and Lily Vincent and Sedona. So I don't think I'm gonna go through and tell you all of who they're all from, but I'm just gonna show you. That one looked familiar though. So I was like, oh, I gotta show you guys who that one's from. Okay, this one's from Cheryl Taylor. You guys, this was the butterfly class that we did in April. So you might recognize that one. And then, this one too. You guys, I, that's a lovely, oh, from Sue. <laughs> so my mom gave this as a gift to my, my, my mom's first cousin. She gave it to Sue and Sue gave it back. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Oh, this one's my, one of my favorites. You guys, this is a blast from the past from the fun folds. So you guys, this is the one that we did for fun folds back. I don't remember what month it must've been June, June. No, something like that. June, maybe. No, it was celebration. It could have been February. You guys, this one was from a class that we did in January, I think it was with the love set. So, oh, for my Aunt Jim, uh, my Aunt Marge and Uncle Jim. Here's another beautiful card. This was from my little niece, Lily, um, to my mom. That was from the MS Benefit. Okay, you guys, look at this one. My godmother and Aunt Karen made this for my mom. It is a, definitely a fun fold. So there is so, if I'm gonna go like this really slow, you guys look at how many layers and flowers are in that. Look at that. Isn't that crazy? And then she wrote a nice little note on the back. She cut, so these flowers are the same flowers from this set right here. So pretty. <clears throat> okay, so I know that that one was Sandy's, I think. And then this one was from the art floral class. If I had to guess, this looks like Kathy King's writing. I'm pretty sure, oh yeah, that's from Kathy King. You guys, that's from art floral. Loved that class. <clears throat> All right, so. What else do we have here? Jeannie Terwilliger. This one's from you. You're watching. My mom got your card. She loved it. I love that celebration paper. It is so pretty. This one's from Dawn Reader. Life is beautiful. Very, very pretty. That's the tree set that was in the holiday catalog last fall. This one's from Pam Leahy, a fellow sideline here, demonstrator. Yeah, and she didn't sign it on the inside, so my mom. So my mom was really happy with all of the cards. She was just tickled pink that you guys all took the time to send her a card. So there's a couple here. This one's from a paper pumpkin, not a paper, a celebration kit from last year. Oh, another one. Oh, anniversary card. So my parents had their um, 49th wedding anniversary on the 1st of July. 
And then there's, oh, Joe and Rosie. Okay, so that one is, so she gave me all the cards, even if they weren't the handmade ones. Oh, here's Mary Carl's. Yours is next. Oh, I recognize this one. Yes, Patty, you thanked me for the strawberry card in advance. I think you thanked me for it during the live, and then I had a chance to send it out after the next day. So this one's from Mary Carl's. You did a great job on that one. You guys, I love seeing the cards that I sent out for my classes, and you put them together. This one's Deb Norman. Look at that pretty card. Hello. I love the black with, I think it's pool party. Very cool accents in the middle of the flowers. So sweet. This one's from Bonnie. Bonnie loves this fairy set. Very, very pretty. Did a good job coloring. Happy birthday. So my mom saved them in all the envelopes so I could see who they're from. Elaine, you sent a card too. Awesome. I love it. Very, very pretty. I love the roses, the little rose blossoms on the side. Okay. This is Susan Rich. Very nice. Okay. Peaches. Oh, a Z fold. Look at that, you guys. Very cool. Scallop contour dies. Some little champagne rhinestones going on. This one's Deanna style. Oh, I've not used this paper lattice yet. <laughs> I need to do that. I I have to <laughs> I have to get it out of the packaging and use it. And she did the plentiful plants, the designer paper. I love it. Very good. Thank you, Deanne. You guys are awesome. Here's Anna Rabadou. You're watching too. Wow, look at that one. Holy Moses. Hi, Barb Barco. Look at that. It's like she put a, a stencil down and colored all around. And then wherever the stencil was, it left it white and then stamped the happy birthday. Very pretty, very vibrant. I love it. <clears throat> this one's from Carissa. Oh my gosh, awesome. Carissa sent a card too. This is the Timeless Tropical set. Oh, look at this, how it opens. Very cool. Love it. Love it. Flirty Flamingo. Um, This was some of the art paper from the annual catalog last catalog. <clears throat> Wendy Krueger. Yay. Berries. You guys, I haven't seen these. I'm looking at them for the first time with you. I love it. This is the Stitch So Sweetly dies. Very, very pretty. You guys, this is all the cards she got. It's amazing. Julie Bierschbach. Oh, she liked this card. I don't know what it was, but she loved the purples. And my mom's a green fan. But she liked this layout with the, the blossoms. Very pretty card, Julie. Love it. Oh, so Kelly gave um, <laughs> Kelly gave out the wrong address. <laughs> so my mom said a couple of them came with the sticker. And they, they warned her that if she kept getting more mail like this, that they wouldn't deliver it. But our post office was pretty good. They kept delivering it with the, the wrong address. <laughs> Jeannie Parker. Woohoo. Look at this pretty card with the flowers. I love it. Very cool with the brick wall. Okay, Judy Immel sent a card as well. Oh, this looks like the kit with the citrus. Hello, citrus. Very nice, you guys. I appreciate all these loves that you're sending, that you sent to my mom. Brenda Wood, woohoo! You got one too. And look at this with the ice cream. Nice, very nice. I love it. That's a nice, cool fold. <clears throat> oh, Mary Lou sent a card here too. Awesome. I'd say she got about two dozen cards when it was all said and done. Hi, Emily. Thanks for sharing, Hillary. This one's Mary Lou Moss. Very cool. I like what she did with the circles to create a background. Very cool. You guys don't even know. I necessarily have ever, never met my mom and don't know her. And she felt so tickled pink. This one, Jennifer Jones. Yay. Very cool. Use the paper pumpkin. Love it. So you guys sent my mom a lot of happy mail and she was tickled pink. So I wanted to share all that with you because you guys like to see what other people make. And so <laughs> that's what you guys sent. Hang on, I'm gonna put them in the bag. <clears throat> all right. Okay, then we have a couple other ones. I gotta see ones here, you guys. I'm at a loss here. I gotta figure out. There it is. Okay, let's see. Boom. I think that my internet finally caught up with my phone. <laughs> so, all right. Hi, Linda Hodge. Hi, Bonnie Kelly. Okay. <clears throat> so we did a swap card showcase and there was a couple late bloomers with the swap. And so this was new holiday catalog product. product. This one came from a gal named Lori Miller. She got the stocking set with the pets. <clears throat> so this was her swap card. This is from Holly Paplo. Poplo. 
uh purple gotta love it <laughs> so she sent me a thank you card for she got one of the paper pumpkins so very very cool and she won a card so this one came from patricia settle thank you i got the check thank you so much patricia so you know i got it now i love this was the from the um the ladybug set last year i believe during celebration with the ladybugs that's where that pad came from oh you guys know this card hi julie ledbetter hi patricia duff hi ann bellinger Woohoo! so do you guys recognize this card did you see that this was the technique thursday card I am betting that it published. <laughs> Nobody, you guys, I truly appreciate the first person that messaged me by noon that says, tip, tip Tuesday or Technique Thursday isn't posted. Then we know we have technology issues. So I didn't hear from anybody today. So I know that, <laughs> I think that, that it got published. She did a scrappy technique here, ripping paper. So if you guys missed that Technique Thursday making this Christmas in July card, make sure to catch that. So I'm in a happy mail swap. <clears throat> with my team and this card came from Anna Remedu. So she had gotten my name. You guys, she, she wrote in here, um, sorry. Oh, I hope you like the card. Sorry, but Stella had an, an accident laughing out loud. <laughs> if you guys don't ever know what Stella looks like, now you can see what happens when Stella has an accident. <laughs> it's so awesome. So you see all of that shimmer and shine all the way throughout this. And then on this, it almost looks like it's glowing. Hi, Marjorie. It's not necessarily glowing. It's just had a Stella um, overlaid. Like, look at that overload. So <laughs> that's what Stella does for your cards. It really glitterifies them. Okay, very pretty card, Anna. I love it. All right, this came from Marsha. <laughs> this one tricked me, guys. <clears throat> I went to open this, and I'm like, it won't open. And so then I realized that this comes up. And then it opens. It is a fold that I've never really came across because it tricked me. I didn't realize that it wasn't like that I could just open it up. So that is an awesome different fold. So thank you for the card, Marsha. I really appreciate it. She sent me an envelope too with a peach on it. Okay, this one came from none other than Jeannie Barker. This one I recognize as well. This was a class card from Ink Paper Scissors. And that was from the Strawberry class in... May. So very pretty. And this one too, I got two letters, two cards from Jeannie on the same day. So this one says, wishing you a lovely day and very cool. So that's what I've got to show you guys for happy mail. So what we're going to do after class, I have here, I have a list. Let's see here. Oh, what I got to talk about. So we're going to give away these cards and we're going to give away one door prize drawing for those people that placed uh, an order for class tonight, I will go through and do my random number generator and uh, pick somebody to win a prize. So my phone is still freezing. So I know you guys aren't freezing because I'm seeing lots of comments coming through. So we're going to find out here why, oh, why my hive is not giving me proper internet on my phone of all things. So crazy. Is it freezing for Jean Tur Turbilliger? Okay. So, um, is it freezing for anybody else? That's what I'm wondering. My hands aren't freezing. Um, I know my phone is freezing because I can't get, so I have two internets for you guys that are new to me. I have two internets in my establishment. I have an internet in the hive and I have a different internet in my house and it's wanting to pick up my house and the house has a stone veneer. And so the, the signal is just a little bit not really there, but it's there enough that it wants to get it <laughs> and take it. And so I have to make sure I connect with the hive. So I'm not, okay, nobody else. You are good, not freezing. Okay, so everybody else is good. So I know I'm having problems and I know why. So um, <laughs> because, <laughs> because of my phone. But luckily with Switcher Studio, I can, um, laptop was freezing okay yeah i can see your comments through my switcher studio so you guys just gotta let me know the first time anybody sees like my hands freezing or delaying um then you just gotta let me know but if it's um just sometimes going out of the video and coming back in that helps too so all right so we're turning off the wi-fi and we're going to turn it back on and see if that helps so we're going to do roll call really quick um <clears throat> so for class tonight a little bit smaller of a class it's the summertime I realized that during the summer, people 
are busy and they have a lot of stuff going on, just like me. So, uh, so we have a little bit smaller of a class. We have 16 for tonight. So we have Sandy Wicklander, Deanna Stell, Angela Knutson, Danny Olson, Ann Bellinger, Lori Kaiser, Barb Barco, Leslie McMinn, Carmen Melendez, Brenda Wood, Jeannie Parker, Mary Carls, Sherry Martin, Judy Kruger, Lynn Beasley, and Rhonda Ayers. Woohoo! That's everybody. So out of all of those people, I had eight people that placed orders to get this class for free. So from those people, those eight people, we'll do a random number generator later, and we'll find a winner, winner, chicken dinner. Okay, I did want to remind people too that I published my DSP sampler and my holiday catalog product share. They're on my website. I emailed about them Tuesday and Wednesday, I believe, over the lunch hour. Uh, so if you're in my email distribution group, then you would have seen the email. But also, if you go to my calendar of events, uh, you can um, find it under August 2nd and August 3rd. I went to print my little piece of paper that says Cards by Christine with my phone number and my host code. <laughs> you guys, I ran out of ink. <laughs> and it looks like garbage. I don't know if I even kept it. I think I threw it away. It printed Cards by Christine and then it didn't print anything else. I need new black ink. So for those of you that are new and catching me for the very first time, I normally have all of my information like down here on this, um, you'll see it on the, you would normally see it on the screen, but you're going to have to forgive me this week. We had set up for the stamp sale and I didn't make it a priority to run out and get more ink. So, so cards by guys, <laughs> my email is Chris M. Bertram at MSN.com and my phone number is 920-960-4390. You guys can reach me anytime for the most part. So um, stamp sale is tomorrow. If you're in the Fond du Lac area, Fond du Lac, Wisconsin, that is. Um, hi, Sally. Um, if you guys are in the area and you want to take a little day trip and come and check out the stamp sale, my garage is full of stuff, <laughs> lots of stuff. Um, not as impressive or big as years past. I would say that there's still a plethora of stuff, but not as many people brought stuff. So um, <clears throat> if you're local and you want to pop by, I, I encourage you to. It goes from 7 a.m. until 5 p.m. And then you guys... Last night, I finished designing the cards for the Summer Creative Escape. The Summer Creative Escape is a demonstrator or discount shopper um, retreat that is in August. It's uh, in person. Hi, Ethel from South Jersey. Woohoo! Uh, the Summer Creative Escape is a one-day in-person retreat, or it is also available with a to-go or an online version if, um, if you're not local to me. I have eight fabulous cards that I designed and a 3D project. And I have nine open spots. On the day that registration ended, I had 50, well, I actually have 10 open spots. I had, I have 50 people signed up and 60 is always a magic number for cutting paper and cutting cardstock. And so I went with 60 for the registration. Hi, Trinket. Um, so I have 10 open spots and, um, when is the sale? The sale is tomorrow. <laughs> it's tomorrow, Marjorie. You better drive up for it. <laughs> it's from seven until five. Um, so the Summer Creative Escape, what I plan to do, guys, I want to fill those last 10 spots. You have to be a demonstrator or a discount shopper. They're the same thing, meaning that you are on the, you sell Stampin' Up! product or you buy it happily for yourself. Doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to be doing a separate live and I'm going to showcase all eight of the cards and the 3D project and I will go over a lot of the details and I plan to do that this weekend because I am bound to have those 10 last spots taken. So I have five more available for Sunday in person and I have five for the online version or it could all be 10 online. It doesn't matter, but I have 10 spots. So Sandy has been making swap cards for the event. So I love it. So, so Marjorie, you work until 3.30 and you're in Sheboygan, if I recall correctly. So you're 45 minutes away. Oh man, I don't know. That's going to be kind of tight. <laughs> that might not make it so well. So, okay. I still haven't gotten the internet on my phone set up. I have no idea what's going on, but we're going to make some cards. How does that sound? How does that sound? How does that sound? Sounds good to me. So, kits. <laughs> oh, Nancy's already mailing her cards on Monday. Awesome. For, so the Summer Creative Escape also had a swapping option. And there are five different groups. And the swaps are closed. So you can still sign up to be part of the event. But you can't do any of the swaps because I've given out swap numbers already. So there are five different groups. And you guys, I have a swap card showcase for the first 
Thursday in August and you will get to be seeing all the swap cards from the swaps that I'm getting for the retreat. So yeah, um, and, and Carissa's working on them too. Yay, yep, you guys gotta get on those swaps because you do not want them sneaking up and biting you in the butt the last day that they are available. Um, like you don't wanna leave them to the end. That's stressful, very, very stressful. So we're gonna restart the phone one more time and see what's what happens. So we have card kits to make though. So we're gonna start with, which one? I'm gonna start with this, I call it a dragon horse, guys. It's over here, it's right here. <clears throat> so. I know it's not a dragon horse, but it sounds cool to call it a dragon horse. I know it's a seahorse. And Carol's work, Carol Lee is working on hers too. Perfect. Yep, you guys gotta get those swap cards done early. I, I have gotten a lot better. I used to wait on swap cards until the night before they were due and it stressed me out. Stressed me out to the point where I almost quit doing swaps altogether. The worst case was when I went on the Alaskan cruise and I was dating Travis at the time and he went on the trip. We were not dating anymore. We were broken up. Side story, guys. We were broken up, but he went, we went as friends and my mom and dad went and Travis, my mom and I were in this little cabin on the cruise ship making the swaps an hour before they had to be turned in. It was stressful. And so I don't do swaps like that anymore. I am the type now that I get them done at least five days ahead of time or they're not like the day before. So whew, oh, that can be stressful. <clears throat> so we're starting off with the seahorse, which I call it a dragon horse a lot because it kind of looks like a dragon. It's so cool. So the dragon horse, I like calling it that. So I'll probably call that a lot. Um, it comes from a set and I'm gonna flip the camera down. So it is a bundle called Seascape but I did not use really any of the stamps from this bundle. I really, I cased this card from uh, Wendy Lee. Um, she did the card very similar in different colors. Hers was not a fun fold. I made mine into a fun fold and I, um, otherwise I kind of like, I, I cased it. I absolutely loved it. She did hers with green, but we had been using so much of the green shimmer vellum that I had to pick a different color and I picked the fresh freesia for that. So I'm going to try one more time. You guys can watch me how I'm going to do this. Let's just see here. <clears throat> if I, I have no idea why my internet, I've got this down here. We're going to try it. Otherwise I'm going to let it go and we're going to just go with the flow and I'm going to try one more time. I don't know why it won't let me authenticate, but okay. In your kits, you guys will have uh, an 11 by four and a quarter piece of cardstock. It's scored at five and a half, which is half of 11 but if you guys look at it again <clears throat> there's another score line in, in right in the middle at two and three quarters here <laughs> right there you do not fold it back you actually fold it in like that okay and take your bone folder and burnish it okay so that's the card base i kind of got distracted though i was talking about this guy <laughs> so back to seascape really quick the only stamps that we really pulled out of here were these little fish and that's because people wanted to stamp their envelopes with the fish because people like to stamp the matching envelopes so <clears throat> i have not really used many of the other stamps the dies are what i love about these guys there is a fish in here like this and there is the dragon horse and they don't cut out exactly they actually leave it so that it's attached and what you would do if you want to take it out of this outer area, you would have to cut it in just a few spots. Okay, so like there's a snip there that you need to make, and then there's a snip, <clears throat> what, let's see here, there's a snip there, and there's one up here. So there's just a few cuts. The same thing happens with the fish. The fish doesn't cut out exactly, you'd have to snip it in a few couple spots. And then here are the fish. You guys should have two fish in your kit. Okay, so the dies are awesome. Absolutely love them. Uh, so I wanted to show you that's the bundle, but we really didn't use the stamp set. Oh, that's so awesome, Patty, that you make cards for the Happy Mail ladies. That's awesome. I love it. Okay, so I also pulled in the pansy patch for people in class because for the pansy patch, there's a bunch of sentiments in here. And thanks for sharing, Angela. There's a bunch of awesome sentiments in here. So 
Um, for this one, I'm gonna actually do a thank you card and I pulled in Fresh Freesia um, for the, the saying. So I didn't really have any inks listed for this because I think I only might have in the instructions listed Fresh Freesia, but you could pull in any color that you want to use. Oh, you guys, I haven't done my trick of putting them on the inside case yet for that one. <laughs> so we're gonna make ours into a thank you card. Okay, there is a piece of paper in your kit. It is, thanks for sharing, Arliss. It is a piece of designer series paper. I think yours I made two by two. There were some scraps that were, um, some people got two by threes and some got two by twos. This comes from the in color designer series paper. So the in color paper, along with the color families have four patterns. This is like a diamondy pattern with these little emblems <laughs> on the one side. And then these are some dots with stripes and then some circles on the other side. So that's where that designer series paper came. Now you guys got probably, I'm guessing some of, okay, so in your to-go kits, some of you either got a two by three or you got a two by two. So let's pretend you got the two by two. <laughs> so when I got into cutting my paper, hi Zaina. And when I got into cutting your paper, I, I didn't cut it down to one by two. So this is two inches here. And because the paper gets wasted behind here, you don't see it. I could have used, basically this was almost three and a half by two. I would have gotten far less out of a sheet of paper. You only get this as a six by six, so you don't have a lot to work with. So what you guys are gonna have to do, you have a little cutting. So I know I don't make you guys cut ever, <laughs> really. You're gonna have to do it tonight. So either take your scissors and honestly, you can use your scissors, just cut right down the middle. Just remember what the, the, the cut edge that I sent you, just make sure you keep that to your outer. Or if you have a little personal trimmer, you can cut it right at one inch. So you've got that. You just have to cut that so that you have two pieces, one's on each side. All right, I hope that you guys got that. Hi D. hi Janet. Okay, and then let's see here. I think that's all we need. I'm gonna get this out. Oh, we need a bow. So in your kit, you guys have a bit of a little bow here. This is also from the Fresh Freesia color. It's the new in color ribbon. Okay, so you'll need that as well in your kit. <clears throat> so let's get this guy out. So this is an easel card and I've got the fish there to help prop it up like that. Very easy, fun fold. Okay, <clears throat> in your kit, you also have a piece well, you have two pieces of basic white. They're both four by five and a quarter. They are exactly the same. Mine's a scrap paper. The one is embossed with the painted textures embossing folder. Hi, Vicki. You got your painted texture embossing folder. So that's done. Your little um, dragon horse here, he's already cut and die cut for you. And then you have a white mat that this is gonna go on to. So, <laughs> you guys, it's basically assemble me happy and get glue happy and we'll put this together. We'll stamp a little sentiment. We'll make it a thank you card because this will be a prize for somebody for next week. So what do you want to do first? All right, let's glue this down. Now, in the past, I've talked about not gluing vellum a lot because you will see it through the frosty clear, like the, that translucent vellum. <clears throat> now this shimmer vellum, you really can't see through it. So I'm gonna shock you guys, and I'm gonna be putting little bits of liquid glue. I promise you, you're not really gonna see it because of that shimmerness <laughs> of the vellum. So this shimmer vellum is, somebody's like, is that stella -ed? It's like, no, it, but it's like Stella on steroids. When you look at that, do you see all that shimmer coming through, that shininess? Okay, and you, did you notice that you can't see where I glued it, right? You can't see the glue through that shimmer. So don't be afraid to use a little bit of liquid glue. That's all right. I'm sure you guys could use tape runner as well. <clears throat> so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my dimensionals. So this layer is popped up and I have this in color paper is actually flat. So I'm gonna prep this with some dimensionals <clears throat> These are actually my paper pumpkin dimensionals that I'm trying to use up. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to attach that designer paper so that it's matted behind it. I think I got them all. So what I'm going to do, now if you're like everything exact, you could grab a ruler out and try to do your measuring as you go. But 
I'm going to, I think that the way I look at this, the way I cut it, you see more of the circles on this side than that side. So I'm actually, because I used a trimmer to cut it, I'm gonna put it like that. And I have about a good quarter of an inch hanging out the side. And I've got my dimensional that's gonna catch that, just like that. So the same thing, I'm gonna pick which side I want. And I'm a righty, so I have to look at, the, I have to hold things with my right hand. I'm eyeballing it, you guys. I am not gonna measure to make sure I'm exact, but I'm gonna catch it with that dimensional and that's gonna hold it. <clears throat> oh man, <laughs> it's stuck to my table. Okay, so that caught it. So now what I'm gonna do is because I've got dimensionals everywhere else that I want them, I'm just gonna put this purple designer series paper down flat. So I put liquid glue behind the, the, the DSP. DSP stands for designer series paper. So now then this is going to go centered. Now, once you set this down, you're gonna have a hard time pulling it off because those are dimensionals are on there. If you need to pick it up at this point, you can still pick it up and move it around. But just once you get it kind of where you want it, then just go for it and just put it flat, okay? That's how I worked putting that designer paper on. Now, you might have wanted to glue it onto here, but then you might not got, this way I knew exactly how much was sticking out from it. Okay, flip that over. Oh, I'm glad you like that tip, Carolee. Okay, flip that over, put a little bit of, oh man, don't do what I just did. Okay, you guys, <laughs> don't do it, don't do it. Okay, <laughs> I did this to my sample. Oh my gosh, you guys, this is what you call getting glue happy, okay? You don't want to do that. Stop, 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 stop. Get that glue off of there. <laughs> Get the wet wipe actually and wipe that off of there. Life will be okay. But you're going <laughs> to... Oh man, I did that. I'm making a sample. And I was like, don't do it for the live. Okay, so I got most of the glue wiped off. I had to make fast action. You guys know why I don't want the glue? Because look. You can't put glue back here, okay? So if you put glue here and it's not fixable, make your card just go like this and it's gonna be okay, okay? So now you do see here though that it's a little sticky. We're gonna move on and come back to it. That's why they make something called an adhesive eraser. We're gonna fix it in a second, <laughs> but we're gonna move on to something else for right now and get all that glue off my fingers. Okay. <laughs> I hope that was entertaining for you guys because that just goes to show you, if you're not thinking about what you're doing, there's always an opportunity and room for error. <laughs> I'll tell you that much. All right, so grab your piercing mat because you've got a, if you've got a photopolymer stamp, we're gonna stamp the thank you right there. Okay, perfect. <clears throat> Again, you could use any color ink that you want. It doesn't have to be fresh freesia if you don't necessarily have fresh freesia yet. So your fish actually should face each other. And I have mine Stella already. I did Stella. They are stella up. And so what I chose to do, because this is an easel card, you need those little fish to be popped up with dimensionals so that it'll catch. So let's find our little dimensionals here. And I'm putting one small one on the back of each of them. And if you look at the sample here, they're about a good three quarters to an inch from the bottom. So we can go ahead and kind of put them here in preparation. Okay. Then <laughs> I wish I would have got glue happy on this one. <laughs> All right, so you can put a little bit of adhesive of choice. <laughs> yes, Angela, even the pros make a mistake. Oh, yeah. It's all about how you fix them, right? Uh, yes, all of everybody's cards are their own work of art. You got it. So that <laughs> I'm thinking, is it okay to glue this? Yes, it's okay to glue that because then that's going to go like that. Okay. Yes, powder embossing buddy can fix it. Heat gun fixes the glue mistakes. Absolutely. I thought I caught this fast enough. So there's a little bit of stickiness on here. You can have glue. So did you notice I didn't take the glue off the bottom half? 
I think that's the bottom half. Let's look. Yep. <laughs> I didn't take the glue off the bottom half because that actually needs to have the glue. So <clears throat> this is called an adhesive eraser. You guys, Stampin' Up! does not sell them, sadly. They used to back in the day. I'd have to say they took it out of the catalog about three years ago. <clears throat> and what it's doing is it's taking the little goo balls off and they're like little boogers is what they end up making. <laughs> so whenever I would stamp with my friend Gina, she would hand me these little thing and it would feel like I was giving, being given a booger. And so, yes, this is what it basically does. You see, it kind of smears it all together and, and pulls all the adhesive together. And then after you have it all, you can kind of just pick it off of that adhesive eraser and then just put it in the garbage. I definitely would not throw it on the floor or let it get on the floor and into your carpeting because I would not want to try to get this off of the floor. So I think I'm going to get most of this off. So this is how the struggle is real, guys. If you put glue somewhere where it's not supposed to go, you can get it off. I think I'm good down here for the most part. It just kind of collects it all and... I wish I had an assistant here with me right now, but we're getting it little by little. <clears throat> so there's a little area here and a little bit. How do you guys like watching me <laughs> fix my mistakes? <laughs> oh, brother. At least it's not ripping the paper because that can happen too. If you're trying to get adhesive off of some paper, it will actually take the top portion off. <clears throat> The other option we could have done is put a piece of white on the back of this and matted it onto another piece of white, which <laughs> it's looking very appealing to me now, but <laughs> you guys are being very patient. Thank you, I appreciate it. So get that off of there. Oh my goodness, almost there. So that feels pretty good. See, now you guys know, like I have done that before where I've cut a piece of designer series paper and I glued the wrong side and I didn't have enough to cut another piece. And so you let it dry and then you do this, but you have to be super careful with designer series paper because that's usually thinner than cardstock and <clears throat> that will take the top paper off or the top layer. Okay. So I think it was probably a bad idea to take the wet wipe because <laughs> it probably smeared it around, but we're getting there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, first times for everything live, right? Okay. I think we might be good. Okay, so give me a shout out if you, if you've done this before, <laughs> good learning. Yes, yes. Little circles works well for removing the glue. Yes, absolutely. And when it comes to the very end like this, I just go back and forth and make sure I catch everything. And when you put your hands over it, you can kind of feel if it's sticky or not yet. So some people would have thrown this away and put it in the garbage but that is not an option for me. <laughs> I would have been like, nope, our poor little guy here. So we've got glue. We're gonna put, just like, guys, we're only gonna put glue right there, okay? <laughs> oh man, okay, now I got a little glue ball mess going on over here, okay. Oh, you guys, that was a little bit of a workout. <laughs> okay, so now, <laughs> That gets put onto our card front like so. And I'm noticing I got some glue on my outside. Now just take your adhesive eraser and it comes right. Guys, if you don't have one of these, they're $3 on Amazon. You can buy them at the dollar store for a dollar. I promise they are there. Okay. Whoa, we are done. Now my arm is sore. <laughs> you guys. <laughs> Oh, that was a little bit of a workout. Okay, back to business. Whew, grab a glue dot, and the glue dot goes right in the middle from here. So this is two inches. I put it right in the middle. 
Oh, yeah. You guys are going to take a deep breath. That took a lot of work. <laughs> Just add another layer next time. You know what, RJ? Yes, you could cut yourself another four by mat, four by five and a quarter mat and put it on there. But that was a learning opportunity to show you guys how you could take and get rid of the glue. So you, these bows are pretty cool. Um, the, the ribbon is pretty cool because it allows your tails to go out how you want them. But I always still like to take and add a glue dot or two to where I wa really want them to go. So like I want that one to come out here. You gotta be careful with these because you might see them through the ribbon. So just kind of set it on there and then grab another one. Yeah, the embossing buddy works great too. You do not want to run it over it though well. I'm thinking the glue is wet, so you definitely want to have it dry. So grab your ribbon scissors. Now that we have our tails kind of tucked down, you're gonna trim your tails. You guys, if my arm is sore tomorrow, right here. <laughs> I'm gonna have to think back. Oh yeah, it's because of gluing a card wrong. Okay, so we got our tails trimmed. And the next thing that you should have now in your kits, you'd have three little opal rounds. So you are three, you, you got three of the same size or you got two big and a small or two small and a big. I don't exactly remember how people got, but you got three opal rounds. And so one I put over here, one I put there and you guys, you can put them wherever you want. It's your card. I might not ever see it. So you want to put them differently, you sure can. Okay. <laughs> oh, take a deep breath. <laughs> oh, I think you might have a card finished, right? Okay. So there we go. Hello from West Michigan. Hi, Jennifer Wheeler. So, and then it pops up like that. You guys, that is your easel card. Very, very cool. You can make almost any card into a really cool easel card. Just don't glue the top back here. <laughs> Oh, you guys, I worked for this one. Whew. Holy Moses. Okay. And I made myself a hot glue mess all over the place here. So this was supposed to be your easy card, you guys, with very limited stamping. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. We're going to go on to card number two. <laughs> Let's see if it's a little bit better. Okay. So we'll set that one over here. <clears throat> I'll leave it here in case anybody's still working on it. For a second and that was fresh freesia that we used for the ink color on the inside all right next we're gonna pull in the hand penned bundle the hand penned was part of a suite in the annual catalog the paper is amazing each one has a more solid less busy side to it so you've got mint and daffodil blushing bride the more uh, evening evergreen with succulent, pale papaya, and then Highland Heather. Um, so the hand pen DSP is very pretty. It's on sale right now for the month of July. Nine packs of designer series paper are on sale for $9.75. So the $11.50 ones are down to $9.78. I believe all of those are, not the specialty paper. So this is the card we're gonna be making tonight, featuring the hand pen petals suite. <clears throat> so the hand pen petals looks like this and there's a die in here so you guys will have your piece already die cut for you I did pull in the scalloped contours dies so these guys right here we've been using them a lot um, <laughs> that will be a special card for some of us yes Barb it will <laughs> so this, these guys if you know I had some sad ones leave at the end of the last annual catalog but these these scallop contours dies have taken the place. They're amazing. So we are using out of this set, I use this flower right here and it's already on a block for me. You already have that die cut and I'll show you that. I colored with the pale papaya and the soft succulent blends, which are newer. The ink color that I pulled in is evening evergreen. And there is, oh, there's a we're going to make this a thank you card as well so that I can give it to somebody next week as a thank you card. So that's where all the stuff comes from. Uh, the one thing that I did pull in, which you guys are probably wondering where I got my sentiment from. So this says happy birthday. This one says congratulations. And this one says thank you. 
So very versatile card. You guys could use this for any occasion. And I'm going to make mine into a thank you card for whoever gets it next week. So I need a little block there and we're just going to pull out thank you. And he's right in here. So Art Floral, if you're looking for some small sentiments to fit on the outsides of your cards, Art Floral is a perfect set. It has a very large amount of versatile sentiments. Okay, so let's get this guy out of the way so we can look. Oh, the other thing that I have in your kit is the are the Genial Gems. So they're part of that suite as well. So think outside the box with this one, guys. It's a very nice layout. I personally believe it is. You could put almost anything in the middle here. If you don't have this exact flower, you could improvise and use something else. In your kit, you got a piece of white that looks like this and you got a die cut. So basically you got the die cut piece and you also got, oh, you got, yep, yeah, basically it's not stamped. Mine is stamped <clears throat> because I, through the magic of TV, have it done, I guess. <laughs> so, so I gave you a piece that you could stamp something else on and put it here in case you don't have this stamp set or this die with stamps that match the die. You have your soft succulent scalloped contour rectangle here that's already cut out for you. So that's done. You'll just have to stamp your sentiment on it. You actually have a little bow that is made for you. I didn't make my bow because I like to sometimes show you how to make bows. It's always good to see again. Your card base is actually a different size. It's five and a half by seven and three sixteenths, okay? Scored at four and a quarter. So when you fold that over, grab your bone folder, burnish the edge. Now the other pieces that you have in your kit <clears throat> are the evergreen mat, which is a traditional four by five and a quarter. And your basic white is three and 13 sixteenths by five and one sixteenth. And that's what's gonna go on the inside, but we'll stamp a flower. And then you have two more mats here. The evergreen is five and a quarter by two and 11 sixteenths while the DSP is two and a half by five and one sixteenth. Okay, so that will go on here and get glued onto here. So let's do a little stamping. I always try to encourage stamping <laughs> first. So I wanna show you, oh, I'm trying to reach it here. So you guys have this actually in your kit right here, this little guy. So let's get these out of here for now. <clears throat> so we're gonna stamp with this stamp right here. Thanks for sharing, Donna. Okay, so grab your piercing mat if you're using photopolymer stamps. And I wanna show you, if you have this and you wanna try, I always encourage you guys to use the die cut piece. I mean, we go through that work of die cutting it because we don't necessarily know who has the die cuts or not and we want it to be as easy as possible for you. So when you ink this up, I encourage you to not have this piece of white on white because if you do, you are gonna have a hard time seeing the outline. It's always best to have that on some sort of a colored background here. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna hover over the top. I just kind of wiggle back and forth until I see that I think it's centered pretty good. When I think it's centered, I just try to go straight down with it and just see if I got it perfect or not. And you can work with it if you're close. So first option is try to stamp on the die cut piece that I gave you. Look at that, it's, it's very doable with photopolymer stamps. If you stamped it and you're not happy with it, use the piece I gave you here. If you're able to use that piece and now you can use this for something else. Hi Lori from Lake Elmo. But this guy does fit on there if you choose to want to use that piece. So the other thing though is I have a flower stamped here on the inside corner. I make it look so easy, <laughs> okay. I'm gonna tell you what I think is my most important piece of advice. Don't rush, um, take your time, and don't be afraid. There's a bunch of advice there. I think people get nervous if they have to make something work a certain way, and then that puts pressure on you. And if you take your time, ink it up good, don't rush. So you saw how I just hovered over the top until I kind of saw where it was. Like that helps me too. Just the, what, what you have to be careful is once you get this lined up, 
then you try to line up that, but then sometimes that will move on you. So it's once you get the one lined up, not moving it while you line up the top, getting that left or right. So it just takes practice and patience to try to get that. And I wasn't exact. I was off a little bit. I was closer to the top than I was to the bottom. But I'll be honest with you guys, nobody's going to know that. When you give this card away to somebody, they're not going to be like, oh, they didn't send her that appropriately. And if you are not happy with it quite, because it's quite not quite exact, you could take your scissors, honestly, and you could trim that and no one will ever be the wiser. And now you can't even tell, like if you wanted, you could just trim a little there and then it's perfectly fine. So when you get these die cut pieces in my kits for me, I really encourage you to use them because otherwise they're just gonna get thrown away. <laughs> and that's sad, but the, and, and that's your choice. You guys, you get your kits from me, you do it with them what you want. I hope that you put them together. Most importantly, put them together. So I'm gonna put my flower in the corner and did you see? I went off. I did not try to fit the whole flower on the page. I didn't mind that part of it's off. And I'm just trying to get a couple little flowers off to the side. Now, in your envelope, you guys also have an envelope. You could stamp a flower on your envelope, and that would be awesome. Okay, now you have this piece right here, which is where your flower is going to go right over the top right here. So, Angela. Um, you just want to make sure you put your flower exactly where it needs to go in case you get a halo. <laughs> because I know Angela sometimes gets those on hers. <laughs> so sorry to call you out, girl. But what you're going to do is just make sure your flower gets put exactly where you need it. Um, so I'm going to stamp a thank you right along the bottom. So here's my sample. The, the thank you is down near the bottom here. So it's going to go right here. Perfect. And then my flower is going to go somewhat like any way which way I want on here but that's it for stamping uh we can do a little coloring now and so if you guys have your blends you can use colored pencils you could use almost anything to color but I did pull in the new blends that are part of the in color family soft succulent and also pale papaya so Lori said she finally accepted the fact that she has so much paper that a mistake is not a big deal you have start over okay you guys this is advice from Naughty Nancy. Her advice is, it's just paper. They make more of it. Get a new piece, right? So it says the one that just spent 10 minutes trying to get the adhesive off the back of her paper, right? But when it comes to stamping, if you're not happy with how you stamp something, stamp it over, right? They, they make more paper every day. <laughs> and we're all collectors at heart. So I'm sure we all have a plethora of paper. So yes, don't be afraid to use it. Um, you're right. Other crafters don't care and non-crafters don't even notice. You guys, it all comes down to you're making something from the heart for somebody and it's the gesture and the kindness and the love that comes from the card. Not that, oh, that little spot is on there or that it's not centered. So yeah, you're so right, Lori. Absolutely. Okay, so back to business. All right, we've got here pale papaya and what I like to do, so you guys probably think that you can only use blends with Memento ink pad. Not true. You can use blends with any watercolor, um, water-based ink pad. So I always put a piece of paper underneath me for when I color uh, because the blends will soak through uh, to the back side. So I like to do a little bit of a darker color in the center of my flowers. So like that. And then I will come around with the light pale papaya and color in the other area. So I'm going over the top of the darker area and that will help to blend it. So what happens right now is I'm gonna hold this up. You can see that there's a little bit of a line over there. So what happens when you go over it with the marker? That line disappears. That's what's awesome about blends is that <clears throat> you don't get a line if you color it kind of correctly, like if you go over that area, you kind of smooth that area out. So when I was coloring, I hated coloring with water-based markers. They left streaky lines. <laughs> so I didn't use markers a lot to color. I used colored pencils more. But when they came out with these blends, it helps you to color and look like an artist. You can see yet there's a lot of darkness right there in the middle. So when you take and go over the dark area to the light area, it helps 
to blend it and it goes away. So that's what's awesome about the blends. And then for the green, what I like to do with the green, I like to do the darker of the markers for my veins of my leaves. And then I like to do the lighter version for everything else. So it gives your leaves like a little bit of a two-tone look as well. So there I don't do as much blending because I really want the darkness to kind of be seen over the veins, but I'll show you when I get, so I'm doing basically one coat over them. And I'm, you gotta be gentle with your marker tips. I am not pressing very hard. I am not pushing into this. Uh, they're brand new markers. There's a lot of ink in them. And so I'm just trying to color in a bit. The other thing I wanna tell you too, sometimes with blends, the more you color over an area, the more it will soak into the paper and it will bleed outside of the lines uh, that you stamped. I think that happened to Carissa on a card that she made with the Peekaboo Farm uh, animals. If you color and keep saturating the paper with ink, it's gonna wanna spread through the paper. And so you just gotta be careful about that too. So there you guys saw, I only did like one layer with the soft succulent. So turned out pretty good. You guys, I am loving these new ink colors. They're so pretty. Okay, and now that we got that done, let's make our bow because then we can assemble everything. So one of the things I try to teach is get everything ready and prepped uh, and then assemble because um, if you, I didn't give myself a lot of ribbon, guys. Oh my goodness. It, my mom says, enjoy those little nimble fingers while you have them because when you get to be my age, they're not going to operate that way. <laughs> So I made it happen. <laughs> I made the bow, but I was really not good to myself. I gave myself hardly any. <laughs> you guys all have your bows made for you in your kits. So, so now that everything's ready, let's start assembling. One of the other things too that's really important is when you're using ribbon that you, um, that you get the tails tucked behind before you start assembling. So just a little liquid glue for this one. And then you can flip it over and the, we're going to do double time here. So flip over. Now, if you wanted to, you guys could also color in the flower that you stamp on the inside if you do. Oh, thanks for sending me a Lisa, uh, an email, Lisa. So Lisa, I think that you're hopefully taking one of my spots at the Summer Creative Escape. I hope that's what the email says because I had you pending on the waiting list. And then if you sign up, that means I have nine spots left which is awesome. So you guys, I'm so excited. Since last week, Friday night, I have been working my little tail off getting cards designed for the Summer Creative Escape. And I finished them last night. So super excited. And there's a 3D project. And I'm gonna do that live. I gotta figure out when, Not probably not tomorrow, but maybe Saturday afternoon or Sunday. I'll do a live and I'm gonna show them to you guys. And so, my disclaimer about it is that this girl works smarter and not harder. So these eight cards are actually gonna be class cards that are spread out and sprinkled into monthly classes over the next um, four months. So I have eight cards I designed and there's two for September, two for October, two for November, two for December. Okay, this is another <laughs> tri trickery card. <laughs> so. You cannot put any adhesive right here, guys. <laughs> I had a couple people do try to put dimensionals here. So let me show you my trick. Yes, mom is always right, isn't she, Mary? I definitely agree. Oh yes, Lisa says she's in. Cool, very excited. So how I do the whole dimensional thing. So flip this over and you want dimensionals on this side. So I'm gonna line up three of them like that. Now, instead of guessing where to put them on that side, I'm actually just gonna put them on my edge right here and then I don't have to guess so I don't go over the edge. And so when I put this down, it'll give me the dimensionals that I need on the back. So perfect. So put your, I do about six dimensionals. I try to do a dimensional for every inch or so. All right, I used to be very more frugal with my dimensionals. And so what I'm doing is there's a hump here. So the second hump in here and here. So the second one on the top and the bottom is what I'm trying to line up my edge here. In case you're wondering for perspective, like instead of trying to guess here, I'm matching up this hump here with that hump there. And then once you have that, 
squish it good. And we're gonna use some dimensionals behind. Ooh, that fell right where I needed it to, awesome. We're gonna put some dimensionals behind our flower here. Now, I would like to do multi types of adhesive and I will put dimensionals at the top of this and then I'm gonna put a little line of glue at my stem. It kind of grounds my stem. So um, you can do that, you don't have to do that. Just a little trick that I like to do with my flowers is I like the stems to be flat and my flowers to be popped up. Perfect, okay. You guys, this green, so these two greens, Evening Evergreen and Soft Succulent, they go perfect with Freesia, they go perfect with the Pale Papaya, and they go perfect with the Polished Pink. So cool. So your little baby bow, grab a glue dot, and I put that down on my flower stem where I want it, and that little bow will get attached right where the glue dot is. Squish it on there good. It's another one where you gotta make sure your tails are going where you want them. This one's perfect. Sometimes they don't always do that. So I'm gonna grab a glue dot for this side and it's on my thumb, hang on, gotta get it there. And then we're gonna stick him so he's going straight down. Once I have my tails going exactly how I want them, that's when I take my ribbon scissors and I trim them. I don't trim them before they're not where I want them. <clears throat> so that one's gonna go that way. That one's gonna go that way. And I think I'm gonna trim just a hair off of that one again. Okay, all right, we're not done, we're there. And we're, we're close though, we have our genial gems. So with the three, you have, does that? No, Trinket, um, this card right here, I don't believe my post office, okay, everybody's post offices are different. Some are pickier than others, and so it just depends. Sometimes my Fondelec post office will wanna charge me, and so I will take my cards back, and I will go to the Malone post office, which is 15 minutes from me, and I will go there and I will say, can you hand cancel or hand stamp these for me? And they will do it with no questions asked because they're a hometown small post office. They want more business. So I think it all depends on people's post offices, but this card right here, this one, I would put this in an envelope and I would mail it and I would not have any problem. I guess my question is, I've mailed out a lot of cards to a bunch of you guys that are watching. Have you guys ever gotten a card that required extra postage from me? I'm curious. Um, You guys got some genial gems in your kit. They come as pale papaya and they come with the soft succulent. They're so pretty. Um, I can't exactly remember what I gave to everybody, but there's two sizes. There's a big and a small. They look almost the same, but I it doesn't, either way your card's gonna look pretty however you have it, but I'm, I know each of you got at least a pale papaya, which I put in the center of my flower, and the other two can go off to the side like that. But, okay, so I had started this card with saying, just think about this layout. It is a, such a pretty layout for a card and it doesn't require that much extra paper. I love the two mats here on the inside, it, and then what I did is I matched it so it looked like it was a continuous line up here. So yeah, just you could do this many different ways with many different stamps and many different color papers and have the same. This look would be a really good mystery card, guys. <laughs> We might have to wait, though, <laughs> and not do it right away. Otherwise, you guys aren't going to have a big mystery to solve. Okay, so we've got this guy done. All right, so let's put him away and clean our stamps, and we're going to go on to it. Oh, yeah, Mary said she puts a thin layer of cardboard on and never had to pay extra. So what Mary's saying is something like, so I have these postcards. When you sign up to become, you get your discount starter kit, or if you want to use card stock. This is just a quarter sheet of paper. And what Mary is saying is she puts this thin little cardboard over the top of the card like this. And when you slide this in the envelope, there's a lot less bumbly is what I would say bumbles on it. It smooths it out. If you are worried about the palm, the thickness of your card, you could have definitely glued both of these layers flat. 
I 100% you could have glued them flat and your card would still look beautiful. It would be amazing and no one would ever know that you didn't pop it up. So if your post office is a pain in the, the pain in the butt, then maybe don't use so many dimensionals. Um, the bow does add a little thickness right there, but like Tamari said, if you put this card over, it's pretty smooth. What happens is sometimes the machine catches these, these um, gems. I've gotten cards from some people in the past, and it's so funny, the envelope is there, and there's a hole, and the diamond is sticking through the hole of the envelope, and it's still attached, <laughs> but it had a hard time <laughs> getting through the machine. So, but yeah, a little piece of cardboard like that is perfect. Okay. Um, Anne said that her post office has never charged more. Always happy to hand stamp. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, soft succulent is a very cool color, Luann. I definitely agree. I'm thinking that if I had to pick a color out of all of the new ink colors, you guys, it's crazy. You would think that I would pick purple. The freesia color like this purple, it's not. I think I would actually pick evening evergreen. Isn't that crazy? I, you probably didn't think you'd ever hear those words come out of my mouth. But yes, this evergreen color is so versatile. It's so pretty. Okay, so let's do a little cleanup on aisle two here and get this stuff out of the way. You guys, the other thing I always tell you to do is never stack your blocks like this. And I try to tell people in class too, you know why? It's hard to pull them apart when they're really stuck together. So I always, when I'm stacking blocks, I stack the acrylic to each other. It's easier to pick that off the table than it is to stick these two together or stick, yeah. So just put them back to back like that. It helps. Okay. Card number two is done. All right. Got this guy done. Okay. Last, but certainly not least, our sharing sunshine. Okay. This one is my one of my favorites. You guys, I love sunshine. We're the Be Happy Stampers, and I put suns on a lot of everything. If you guys haven't noticed that yet, I love sun, sun, the sun. So this is the set. It's called Sharing Sunshine. I have the hardest time saying <laughs> Sharing Sunshine. Um, we're going to be pulling in this punch here. You guys, I did a tip Tuesday on this, and then I went and made a card with it right after it for class. Isn't that awesome? Then we have in here Celebrate with Flowers. That one is a say, it has a saying in here, may your day be filled with sunshine. So I pulled that saying out for this card. All right. The other thing is there's these two embossing folders called checks and dots. And your, we use the dots on this side. So just one side. So these are these skinny little folders that fit in the, the little boss, the stamp and cotton and machine, the little baby one. It fits in there but it's hard to make a full size card because you want the whole thing to be embossed. You guys, it's not embossed on this side, it's only embossed on this side because they're these little folders. Okay, so the happy birthday comes from Sharing Sunshine. Anne loves this card, you need to get it, yay! Okay, so we have our little sun, we have our little cheeky here. Disclaimer, the one and a quarter, you can see me, there I am, hi. The one and a quarter inch punch is retired from Stampin' Up, but circle punches are a staple in your diet for stamping. So I'm pulling them back in as I see fit. <laughs> so Stampin' Up doesn't sell the punches anymore because they were not selling very fast. A lot of people are getting into the dyes and just why you can't stock something that doesn't sell, right? It doesn't make sense. So they figure in a few years, They'll redesign them so that they work better and maybe they'll have more circle punches in the future. But right now, they cut them out of the line, but I still am using them. This paper actually comes from, da -da -da -da, who knows, who knows, who knows? It's called Pattern Party. It's 12 by 12 designer series paper, so full sheets, and it comes in a mega pack and it's part of the hostess benefit. So if you guys have a $150 workshop or more, you get at 150, 10% in host credit, which is $15. And this pack of paper is a host item at $18. You only pay the $3 extra. So just consider that, you guys. If you like this paper and you're gonna have a workshop, you could get this as a host item. And it's black and white on one side and colored on the other. So these are all pairs. 
And so you can see it's all blacks and whites on one side and then colors on the other. So for this card, <clears throat> I originally thought in my head that we were gonna do some with dots and we were gonna do some with the checks. And I completely forgot that when we, or I should say when I made all the supplies for your cards, we went all with circles. So everybody's got this white and polka dot, the black polka dot paper. Yes, Deb, I saw that you used this set for your craft roulette card last week. You did an awesome job. I love it. It was a beautiful card. So you guys all have the dots. And so not to confuse you guys, but I looked at my kit that I had made up for tonight and I'm using this paper with the checks. And so we are, it's interchangeable, but everybody's going to have your cards going to end up looking like this little guy instead. Okay. So that's the designer series paper. The other thing, so you guys, there's a lot of pieces. Oh my gosh. Don't be overwhelmed when you open this up. Promise me you're not going to be overwhelmed. There's a lot of pieces. Okay. Let's start at the bottom. I think. <laughs> All right. You guys have a piece of black. It is a quarter sheet of paper. It's four and a quarter by five and a half. So it is a true quarter sheet. It's not a mat. It's a quarter sheet. Okay. So that's a mat that you have. Then you're going to have a piece of Daffodil Delight, which is four by five and a quarter. So this is your mat. And again, you guys are all going to have polka dots on the side here. So you're going to have polka dots like that. Uh, like that. Okay, let's take him out. So polka dots for you, checks for me, <laughs> just to show you a different way to make a card with a different type of embossing folder. So that comes, that's the other embossing folder in this kit. So you guys have that. Then you have a piece of black. It is three and three eighths wide by eight and a half. So eight and a half is what a traditional piece of paper is, eight and a half by 11. So you can get three of these out of a piece of paper. It's scored in the middle at four and a quarter. So you've got your score at four and a quarter, it's eight and a half. The width is three and three eighths, okay? So you have a score line there. You can definitely go ahead. Let's get the scoring out of the way right away. Take your bone folder and score it. Okay, that's gonna end up, it goes on the top. It does not, a couple people in class wanted to, they thought maybe it might get glued underneath. No, no, it just goes on top. It's easy. So don't start gluing anything yet either. <laughs> okay, then you have a piece of Daffodil Delight. This one measures three and an eighth by four. So that's just gonna layer over the top of the black, but don't glue yet. I'm just telling you what you guys should have in your kit. This one is a piece of designer paper. It's three and 13 sixteenths this way by two and 15 sixteenths that way. Me and my 16ths, I know. <laughs> That's how I roll. If you're not a 16th person, go down eighths of an inch or quarters of an inch. Okay, so that's going to go there. You also have a piece of white that is the same size as the yellow. The white is four by three and an eighth, and that's going to be for your inside, like this. Okay, so far, so good. I hope you guys are with me. You also have a piece of black. This black measures two and three eighths by two and three eighths. It's a square. And then your white one is two and an eighth by two and an eighth. That's basically going to go there. You guys have a little white circle. You do not have it stamped, right? You just have a white circle. I'm going to show you how we're going to stamp it. So is a photopolymer stamp. You're going to see through it really easy. I did not give you a scrap in case you mess up because I didn't know who would have a one and a quarter inch punch. So, and not all of you might even have the stamp set. So you might be choosing to do something different in this area here, but you should have a white circle. You're gonna have a white, uh, a black piece like this, which is one inch, ooh, what is it? It's one inch by, oh, I'm just gonna get my ruler. It's one by four and a quarter. The yellow is three quarters by four. Nope, it's three and seven eighths. And then the white is a half of an inch by three and a half. So you guys who are taking this class with me, all of those measurements are in the PDF tutorial I sent you. All my Be Happy Stampers, you guys got the free PDF tutorial emailed to you already. So all these measurements were given to you. Now I have yours all punched. So those, those who got my kits for me, you got yours punched already, but I chose not to punch it so I can show you guys how I punch it. Okay, Mary Ellen, thank you for sharing. Okay, then you have your piece of organdy ribbon. It's the black organdy ribbon. They're coming out with this in white. 
in the holiday catalog. You can see all the sparkles and the shimmers and the glimmers. So you have 10 inches. You have two options with that. Um, it's enough to tie it around and then tie a knot. And that's what we're going to do. So I told you guys, this was a lot of pieces in this kit. Hopefully you guys followed along. You understand what's going on. So let's do our punching really quick. So I did a tip Tuesday on this about a month ago now. This is called the treasured tag punch. There's actually a track at a half inch, three quarter inch, and one inch, and two of them. So you can do six different measurements. And you wanna make sure that at the half inch, it fits in the track very nicely. So it slides in there. If you're over, it won't be as easy. And I have those pieces measured so that you slide it all the way and touch the back edge here. And when you have it that it fits in the, the, the slot right here, that channel, you should be able just to punch it really nice. And that, it rounds the corners. Now, this other one, so that was a half inch. This next one's the three quarter inch track. So that one fits in this three quarter inch slot. You should be able to slide it and push it all the way to the end. And then same thing, that slides in. And I should have had them at the right distance where this guy kind of just nestles right in there. Now lastly is the black piece. This one's the most complicated one. If you do not have this at exactly an inch, you're gonna struggle. And everybody in class, <laughs> I was over by a hair. So we ended up taking the trimmers. And if you're over by a hair, it's not gonna punch so nice. So what we did in class is we grabbed the little trimmer and we made sure everybody's was at an inch. Like this. <laughs> See, there's a little bit to cut off there. That will cause you, that little strand of paper there will cause you little problems. So hopefully now that that's at an inch, it should fit in the track here. You push that all the way in and it, bam, it trims the end really nice. If you're wider, what it does is it puts a little divot, not a divot, but an out divot. <laughs> Did that make sense? It like makes a little mark. So if you guys have that on yours from me doing it, you just got to take your scissors and kind of trim it and smooth it out a little bit. But this can make any sentiment banner as long as you want it. So yeah, they're very cheerful. Um, RJ, the name of the event is called the Summer Creative Escape. You go to my calendar. So go to cardsbychrisb.com. C-A-R-D-S-B-Y-C-H-R-I-S-B. Because my last name is Bertram. So cardsbychrisb.com. Click on the calendar. There's a, an event, a tab for events. It's called my calendar of events. And the date you want to look for is either August 6th, 7th, or 8th. They're all the same. They have all the same information. I have Daffodil Delight ink here. I've got one of these little sun ray things. I'm going to stamp it on my piece of white that's two and an eighth by two and an eighth. So August 6th or 7th or 8th, they all have the same information. I have, sp I don't know where you live, RJ, but I have space for in person on August 8th. I think that's the Sunday. Let me just look real quick. August 8th is the Sunday, or I have um, online versions available. Um, I have four creative demonstrations lined up. I have um, eight card make and takes, and I have one project, a 3D project. It's a book. It's a cute little book with binding and pages that you can make into a scrapbook, add pictures to, or however, a little journaling book. So this is the sun. What you guys are going to do you're just going to go right over the top. Did you see Sandy? Slow and steady wins the race. So everybody's ink pads are slightly different. My ink pad there you see is really dark compared to that guy. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to flip it over and I'm going to see what second strength looks like. I may go with the second strength. So first strength was on the one side and second strength is there. And that's just so light so light so so I'm gonna go with the darker one um am I done with yellow no you guys you have to do on your inside this is your inside so as long as we have that stamp let's go ahead and stamp our inside so it's called the summer creative escape it's a hundred dollars 
It doesn't matter if you are in person or mailing, it's $100 because if you're in person, you get food and if you want it mailed, you pay for postage. So they offset each other. So it's the same price. People ask that, is it the same price mailing versus in person? It is. Um, so I think we're done with Daffodil Delight. And then grab your Memento ink pad and we're gonna put a little happy face on our son. He's gonna go right there. And then we're gonna do it on this guy here. So we're just putting a little, doesn't it make you happy? He's so cheerful and so smiley. Okay, we also have a sentiment here in Memento. So you guys, this does not give you a lot of wiggle room. This happy birthday is about the height of this. So if you don't wanna use this happy birthday and you have something else you wanna use, definitely go for it. So I have um, attendance gifts. I have, um, um, prize patrol. It's like if you've ever attended a Stampin' Up! convention, it is like a Stampin' Up! convention meets a weekend retreat with your girlfriends. So stamp your happy birthday on your little strip of paper. And I think that's it for black. Now we have left is the blushing. Oh, we got to do our inside sentiment. Hang on. We're not done with that. But we'll go on to our cheekies. Okay. So these little cheekies. People did not like this stamp in class. The other night, they hated it. Um, you got to just use it right. And maybe it means practicing more with it. But you can see those circles there. That means when that was pressing hard. Like when you have a very little stamp like this, you don't press hard into the ink pad because it will suck all the juice up. So when you're using a little baby stamp like this, you're so used to pressing into... Uh, a pad, you don't do that. Oh, RJ, it would be virtual. Cool. Yep, just look for that. If you have any questions, catch me tonight or tomorrow and I can answer them. And Deb can't wait. I'm so excited. Deb's going to get to hang out in the hive. She's making a road trip. So this cheek is pretty solid. And so if you go with a little lighter of a sun, you might want to stamp off and do your cheeks at second strength. Okay. So my ink pads are crazy. My ink pad upstairs where I craft is really a lighter ink pad and my ink pads that I have down here are all newer and so in this case I'm going to go with a dark cheek just because and you know what you don't even have to put the cheeks on <laughs> if you guys don't want to put the cheeks on don't put the cheeks on um it's okay to not have cheeks and I might not have cheeks <laughs> so um just know that either go first or second strength for your cheeks or leave them off whatever you want but it's blushing bride is what I use for the cheekies Okay, so that one goes there. That's extra. I think we're ready to assemble. So let's move this out of the way. How do you do make and takes if it's virtual? Okay, good question. So just like I'm doing a card class right now, um, there were 17 people that signed up for this class. They're doing it virtually. So what happens is you're going to get a to-go box. But when I send the to-go box, it's actually after the event. For my card classes for like Thursday nights, I always mail the kits ahead of time. So people are stamping with me right now making these cards. But for the for um, for the event, the to-go boxes go after because you'll need to get swaps. You'll need to get potential prizes. You might win a raffle. And so anybody who does the virtual event will get their stuff mailed to them the week after. So the event closes on Sunday or it's done Sunday. By Tuesday, Wednesday, all the boxes will be mailed out and you'll get your kits. Just like this, you'll get kits and you'll stamp them. And... I know some people were worried about not necessarily having the stamp sets because they're brand new. Uh, the, the, step, the stamp sets are only available to demonstrators right now. But you guys, when you watch my live, when I'm showcasing the cards, my style has kind of changed to not do a lot of stamping on the outside. And if it is stamping on the outside, it's more versatile stamping. A lot of die cutting. I love die cutting and I love the dies. So RJ, you ask, how are the make and takes? Well, you'll get a kit, just like everybody that's doing the class with me tonight has a kit and you'll make your cards at home at your own pace. I will be doing a live showcasing how to make the cards, special for those people, and you'll also get a PDF tutorial. So you'll be able to make all the cards at home. So side note, <laughs> but good question. Okay, um, straight up and straight down with that little circle, yes! Okay, what Deb is talking about with this little circle, so many people. Um, if you don't go straight down or straight up, you get like, it's weird. You get a line on the side. I don't know if you can even see that, but it's darker on the left than it is on the right. If you don't stamp this guy just right, 
he's a pain in the butt. So Deb called that straight down, straight up, little circle. Do that every time and you'll be a lot happier. All right, let's, let's stamp our inside really quick before we forget that again. So it says, may your day be filled with sunshine. That can go up here to give us a little room. Oop, it's crooked. That's okay. If you want perfect, you buy Hallmark, right? I'm not gonna restamp it. Little information. Normally I stamp the sentiment first because generally when I stamp my focal images, they don't matter if they're straight. But if you stamp your sentiment first, then you can always flip it over. But I couldn't have flipped it over, so it's all gonna be good. All right, let's get happy here and let's glue some stuff. So you guys, I like to glue things. If I'm if I've got the glue bottle open, I like to have the glue bottle open. So I'm gonna put adhesive. My adhesive of choice is generally liquid glue. You're very welcome, RJ. Again, if you have more questions, I'm always available. Well, I'm not always available, but I, but I answer everything all the time. <laughs> Whenever I can, can answer it, I will. So, and if you need to talk, we can always chat too. So just um, reach out. So here's this guy's going on here. You guys can always reach me through Messenger. Cards by Christine, Facebook Messenger. So this one's gonna go on here. So you saw that as, as long as I had that glue bottle open, I like to put adhesive on a few things all at the same time. Otherwise you're opening and shutting, opening and shutting, opening and shutting. Okay, so that's gonna go here. <laughs> uh, Emily said she's the crazy Kiwi. I love it, <laughs> using the water blaster, okay. <laughs> yes, you are at 12.30 p.m. on Friday. Yes, it's your afternoon. Yeah. Okay, so let's do a little more gluing. So let's flip this one over. Okay, and then we're going to also put our glue on this one. Just a little line of it. Okay, so let's get this one. Make sure your embossing goes to the right, if that's how you envision it. You can always switch it. You guys are always welcome to change these cards up However you see fit. I love seeing in my class card challenge how you guys change them up. It's always awesome to see that. You guys, I never take offense to anything ever being changed. We all have a creative bone in us. We do. Sometimes it's smaller than others. <laughs> but um, So here's what we got. This one's going to get, I'm going to put two dimensionals on this one. This one's going to get liquid glue. So we're just doing a little more layering and prepping. So this is going on this black piece. Do you see how they nestle really nicely together? Yes, they are way better than Hallmark, you betcha. Okay, and then this comes off. That's gonna go in the center here of this little guy. Okay, now I did not put glue on this one yet because we have to tie the ribbon around. So. If you have a buddy next to you, that's where it comes in handy. The, this is the buddy system where they can hold this down for you, but I don't have a buddy here, so I'm gonna have to use my, I use my ring finger to hold it. <laughs> and then I get a nice bow. And this is not a real bow, this is like a fake bow. And so here's my trick too. If you don't like where your bow or the knot is, you can take, I pinch it here and I pinch it here and I can twist it wherever I want. If you try to pull it, you're gonna rip the paper on the, the end. So you always wanna move it to the left or the right at the same time. Get it to the height that you want. It's about an inch. And my knot is about three quarters to an inch away. And you can kind of get a feel for it. So I'm gonna move it back to the left a little bit. Okay, so now that that's tied on, you can go ahead and put, I put liquid glue behind this layer. Okay, it's not often that I put ribbon all the way around. I did in this case because there's such a little area here that it wasn't worth it to cut little pieces for everybody. Okay, this goes on the top here. Isn't this yellow with the black and the white? So awesome, it's striking. Okay, then this gets liquid glue as well. So you guys, we had three trick cards potentially that could trip you up because what I'm doing is the scored area on the top is what I want flush and it should be pretty centered here or I mean it should not have any overhang. This one, you couldn't put adhesive here. This one, you couldn't put adhesive here. 
<laughs> my first one, you can't put adhesive here. So I had three trickery cards for you guys tonight. Okay, so same concept with this one. I don't wanna put adhesive over here, so I'm gonna kinda guess that my son is gonna go here, so I'm gonna put three on that side, and then I'm gonna put three on this side, and then that will ensure I don't go over the edge like that. Oh man, it's sticking all over me. Okay, and then this is going to go something like that. If you don't squish it down, you could always rearrange it if you want to. And then this one, we're gonna put a few dimensionals on the back of that. And almost there, this guy gets put the right way. Let's get my scissors. I got a little overhang of paper, it's just hanging there. Okay, so this is gonna get centered. I'm centering it with this edge to this edge and I've got the overlap margin with that black. So it still looks like that eighth of an inch around there. Okay, I think I'm good. Grab your ribbon scissors and trim off your ends of your bow. It'll go like that and that. Okay, black matte dots. Where are they? <laughs> um, so everybody got in their kits three black matte dots, which are amazing and not in my bucket. <laughs> they are elsewhere. So pretend that you put one here, one there, and one there, <laughs> and that will complete that card just like that. So you guys, isn't that cool? So if you're ever making swap cards and you don't have enough of one paper, find a pattern that is interchangeable. And so here I did pot, the polka dots with this polka dots, and then I did this more hashtag -y looking one with the checks on this side. So, and they, it, I mean, for a swap, it's interchangeable. I mean, it's basically the same card, um, just with different paper, but it's so cool. It makes me so happy. And you look at my sons, like they both look good. Like if you got these cards independently, you would never know that one son was lighter than the other one. And this one doesn't have little blood. This one's more like of a girl and that one's more of a boy because the girl's got her blush on and the boy doesn't have blush. So this is a more masculine card actually with the more, I think the hashtags and that is more with feminine with the polka dots. I don't know. I guess maybe I'm just looking at differences between the two. Um, and if you're giving this one to a guy, maybe you'd leave the black matte dots off because Guys don't generally appreciate bling as much as girls. So yeah, just some minor differences, but it's still so super cool. Okay, so let's go back and show you all the three cards that we made tonight and see which one you like the best. I'm always curious which one you like the best. Jennifer says that she thinks this one's her favorite. Oh. You guys, I love the sharing sunshine thing um, a lot. So I like this one a lot. I love purple a lot. So I like the purple. I love flowers a lot. So I have a hard time on this one. Um, for those of you though, that didn't necessarily have the sharing sunshine stamp, this card was so interchangeable with putting whatever sentiment and you could put something else there so easily. And the same thing there, you could put something else on the inside. So. Oh, RJ likes the seahorse. Awesome. D likes the sunshine. Mary says all of them. Mary says the sun. Anne says sunshine. Okay. Fair. So you guys like them in general. So good. I, I'm happy. I Sometimes I'm worried <laughs> like because I make cards that I like, but it doesn't mean that everybody else does. <laughs> so yeah, Anna likes them all. So very cool. Well, I'm going to set these three aside because these will be announced next week who the winner, winner chicken dinners are. Um. So for now though, I have these four cards, the beauty of the earth. The green one grabs you the most, Trinket says. Tough decision for Lori, the design of the sun card. You guys, all of these cards, actually, when you pull them back, the layouts are all very versatile. So one of the things that I've gotten really good at is when I see a card, I look at the layout more than I look at anything. I look at how can I use the stamps and the paper that I currently have to make a card with this layout? Like, cause all three of these layouts are very versatile, very easy to use. Susie says that the flower card is her favorite. Awesome. Nancy likes the hand pen one too. Good. All right. 
So these, oh, I already just showed somebody. You might've caught that, but these were from actually two weeks ago. I did not announce them during the swap card showcase. I think I announced nothing for winners. I don't think I had a moment to draw the winners. So that's why I didn't do them last week. So we're going to give away these cards. This class was from July 1st, you guys. It was two weeks ago tonight. And I'll be honest with you, I have maybe five to seven sets of this class left. And it was free or it is still free with a $40 purchase. Or it was, um, I think, $20 mailed. So if anybody's watching tonight and you missed out on these or if you did them and wished you would have gotten another set, just know you could, if you place an order, you could get them free with a $40 order or um, you could pay for them. And so I have them ready to go. They could go in the mail tomorrow <laughs> if anybody is still interested in them. I actually had Kathy Jackson just put in an order and she said, do you still have any of the beauty of the earth? And I'm like, yeah, I sure do. So normally I don't ever have kits left over. It's very rare, but I made an abundance of this one apparently. So, <laughs> all right. Arliss loves all the cards I make. Oh, that's so sweet, Arliss. <laughs> so, all right, drum roll, girls and boys. Brrr. Okay, winner, winner, chicken dinner of this one is Wanda Manasseri. You guys, I butcher names. I'm sorry. Um, Wanda Manasseri, M-A-N-A-S-S-E-R-I. You are the winner, winner, chicken dinner of this card. All right, drum roll. Brrr. Okay, winner, winner, chicken dinner of our winter card. Right here is Philly Cinto, Philly, and then C S C I N T O, Philly Cinto. You guys, what I do on the backs of my cards that I give away to you, I stamp them. And it says this is an individually crafted work of art. Any smudges, splotches, or other irregularities are intentional and do not diminish the quality of the piece in any way. And it says stamp it up at the bottom. So, so I don't put my name on them. So then it gives you the option to use them however you want to. And you can pretend that you made them if you want. <laughs> Is there stamping with the tree kit? Yes, I'll tell you in a second, Deb. This one, brr, me, hi, Mary Schneider, is Donna Grushecki. You are the winner, G-R-U-S-C-H-E-K-E, -E, Donna Grushecki. And then last but not least, brr, drum roll, Lynn Beasley. You are the lucky winner of my favorite card from this class. So Deb just asked, is there any stamping involved in this class? In this one right here, you need to stamp a sentiment. Your option on whatever you want to do on the inside, I stamped a tree, but you wouldn't have to. You really just need a sentiment. If you want a sentiment out here, you guys, this one, a sentiment. So I left it really simple. Now, this one does require a little stamping. There is a tree in this set. If you don't have the tree, though, I give you a piece of white paper that you could use something else that you have at home. I do have some snow drifts stamped on the bottom here and then this tree. Now, this background here or this tree is also what I used on the background. So the things that are stamped on this card are the blue tree back here and then this green tree and the snow drifts and a little sentiment in navy. So this one has the most stamping. This one you could get by without any stamping. This is a piece of designer series paper in the green olive and I did stamp a tree on it. Now, I don't know if people did this class, if they stamped the tree or not, because you could get by without stamping any of that imagery on there. Oh, you're very welcome, Donna. Um, yeah, so uh, Tammy, I think you did this class, and I don't know, did you stamp the tree on there? Because it probably looks super cool without stamping the tree. So sentiment here, and then just some blue, green, and yellow ink to color the sky and the, the grass. So you guys, very, so if you don't have a big collection of stamps at home, but you want a, a nice class to do where you don't have to do have a lot of stamps, this one right here will be the one that you have to be the most creative with. And if you don't have a tree stamp, you could something else, a snowman. Oh my gosh, you guys could put a snowman in here um, or anything. Like you could stamp something else. You wouldn't even have to make it wintry. You, I mean, you can make it something completely different. So side note, just to let you guys know, but congratulations to all those winners. Woohoo! Okay, let's see here, you guys. I'm going to pull up my phone and see once if I can pull up random number generator <laughs> so we can pick a winner for the class tonight. So door prize for class tonight. So I had, I believe I said, let's see here. I had um, eight people place orders tonight for, um, for class. So we will pull up here. So we're going to pick out of eight people. We're going to do a random number generator. Oh, it's not working. Oh man, so I really don't have internet. 
What? I don't know. <laughs> oh, man. Let's see here. It says I'm offline. It just doesn't like me. How do I want to do this? So I don't know whose number is what. Oh, man. How do I do it? Do I wait and we do it next week when I have the internet working? Let's see here. I, who has a num random number generator on their phone right now? I know that I'm about 10 seconds ahead of you. If somebody has random generator on their phone, write in the comments that you do. We're going to have you guys help me do a drawing, okay? So whoever has that they can do random gem number generator on their phone, tell me that you do. And what you need to do is put in eight num like put in eight and have it randomly pick the number and I'll tell you who number what number who the winner is of that number so I need your help <laughs> somebody's gotta reach out to me so we can figure out who the winner is so it, it, isn't it amazing that the technology on my phone and my tablet worked perfectly for the live tonight Melanie Foy is not watching but she always said that during game night is when I disconnect or have issues. Well, for the like the last few, I haven't had any problems. And so like, that's amazing. But number two for your favorite number. Okay, so Anna Rebbe, oh, Emily says she can pick the number. So Emily, do random number generator. I know who number two is though. So Anna, I would feel bad picking number two. So I want somebody to randomly pick. Barbara Baker, Godby says number six. Okay, that's what we're gonna go with, guys. So... Number six, drum roll please, is Judy Krueger. Judy is the winner of a random prize from my, my stash or my vault is what I call it. So Judy Krueger, you are the lucky winner for the door prize for class night. So how I do this guys is I have prizes that I have extra products that from, from catalogs and so <laughs> we all have extra stuff, right? So what I decided to do starting in June, I think it was actually July, I started doing anybody who places an order for class um, to get the card kits for free. I'm doing uh, a prize for the one person and then I do a separate challenge for my team. So, um, yeah. So um, my team challenge right now is to create a card and that challenge ends today. And Anna, I think you're the only one that has submitted uh, an entry for that challenge. So you might be the only one. If you're the only one, then you get the prize and I'll be announcing that next week, Thursday. So, all right. Let me look at my post-it note. What did I forget? We did the door prize. We did the beauty cards. Summer Creative Escape, you guys. Just a reminder, I will be doing a live. It'll be probably be about a half hour, and it'll be showcasing all the cards and all the projects and telling you all the stuff <laughs> that's involved with that. Stamp sale is tomorrow, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. I have lots of fabulous helpers. Oh, my gosh. It makes it so much easier so that so that it's not as much work for me. I thank all my helpers that helped me today and everybody that is gonna help me tomorrow. It's amazing how many hands make light amount of work. So um, yeah, if you guys just joined in late too, just know I went through all of my mom's birthday cards that we got or that she got. And um, if you're interested in a DSP sampler, I have 24 that I'm, I'm making up. I have 12 of them already accounted for. So if you're on the fence about a DSP sampler, you shouldn't wait because once they're gone, they will be gone in product shares. If you go to my calendar of event, all the details for those two things are August 2nd and August 3rd, if you go to that. And if you guys need to contact me, I'm so sorry. I couldn't print that stuff, but Chris M. Bertram at msn.com is my email address. <laughs> and so I encourage you to email and I wish all of you guys lived closer like Jennifer wishes she did. So Jennifer, when I get down to um, your neck of the woods, I will be popping you a message so I can meet you in person. Um, I have to take a road trip at some point and I always go down 65 and Lebanon is close <laughs> off of 65. So you're on my list to visit sometime. So all right, what do we need for the Monday class? Good call. All right, I'm going to flip down before I end real quick um, so RJ can see this and anybody else. So this is what you guys will need for mystery night. Good night, Carolee. We'll see you later, girl. Um, this is what you guys need for clue one. So you'll need to take a screenshot of this or you can find it on my calendar of events for Monday night. Um, you guys can definitely just take a screenshot right now or go to... Mm, July 19th and you'll find all of this there so thanks for the good luck Cheryl I appreciate it so take a screenshot of this RJ in case you or or go to my um 
go to my website. So um, all that's on there or Facebook. I actually have it on Facebook. You go to my events on Cards by Christine on my Facebook page. Yes. Um, address. My address, you guys, 575 East 11th Street. Um, how do I give you your address? Ha ha, I thought you were asking for my address. How do we give you our address? Donna, message me. Chris M. Bertram at msn.com. Or if you're on Facebook, you could go and message me through my Cards by Christine Facebook page. My phone number is 920-960-4390. You can text me too. <laughs> so, all right. Trinket made three cards from the last mystery night. Awesome. Wasn't that a super cool layout? Oh my gosh. I had so much fun with that layout. I actually cased my own card to make one of a, the class cards for the summer creative escape. I'm so excited to show it to you. So, all right, you guys, we did good tonight. Lots of love and hug and sunshine to you guys. I hope you enjoy the rest of your week. Enjoy your weekends. Make sure you are getting out there and enjoying the weather and also making some cards and doing what you guys love to do. So take time for you. All right. We'll see you on Sunday probably and then Monday. All right. Love you guys. Bye.